Beneath the quiet farmland of America's Midwest, the ground is doing something most people never imagine. It's not rumbling like California. There are no visible fault scarps or warning cracks in the earth. Yet for months, instruments have been recording hundreds of small earthquakes beneath the Mississippi River Valley. Tiny pulses of movement in a place most Americans still believe is geologically safe. These tremors are subtle. Most people never feel them. But to geologists, they tell a much bigger story. Not of chaos, but of pressure. Pressure accumulating along one of the most unusual and misunderstood fault systems on the planet. A fault capable of shaking half the country at once, not because it's the biggest, but because of where it is and what lies beneath it. This isn't California. This isn't the Pacific Ring of Fire. This is the center of the North American plate where earthquakes aren't supposed to happen at all. And that's exactly what makes this region so dangerous. The New Madrid Seismic Zone doesn't sit at the edge of a tectonic plate. It sits in the middle of one. A place where the continent should be stable, quiet, locked in place. But deep below the surface, the crust carries the scar of a failed breakup that almost tore North America apart hundreds of millions of years ago. Long before dinosaurs, this region began to split. A massive rift opened, stretching from what is now Arkansas toward Illinois. Magma rose, the crust thinned, but the continent never fully separated. The rift failed, and when it failed, it left behind something far more dangerous than a clean break. It left a zone of weakness buried deep beneath the Midwest. Today, that ancient scar is being squeezed from all sides as tectonic forces slowly compress the North American plate. The movement is tiny, millimeters per year, but the pressure never stops. And when stress builds in a place that isn't designed to release it easily, the result isn't frequent small earthquakes. It's long silence, followed by violent release. That's exactly what happened in the winter of 1811. Just after 2 a.m., the ground beneath New Madrid, Missouri began to roll. Not shake, roll. Eyewitnesses described the land moving in waves like the surface of the ocean. Homes lifted from their foundations. Trees snapped in half. The Mississippi River reversed direction, surging upstream as the land beneath it warped and dropped. And then it happened again. And again. Over the next 10 weeks, at least three massive earthquakes struck the region, each one powerful enough to be felt across huge portions of the continent. Church bells rang in Boston. Chimneys collapsed in Cincinnati. The shaking reached into Canada. Entire forests sank into the mud, forming what is now Real Foot Lake in Tennessee. Modern estimates place those quakes between magnitude 7.5 and 8.0, comparable to California's worst events, but with one crucial difference. In the eastern United States, seismic waves travel much farther. The crust beneath the Midwest is older, colder, and denser than the fractured crust of the West Coast. That means seismic energy doesn't dissipate quickly. It carries, it amplifies. One major rupture here doesn't just affect a city, it affects regions. A single New Madrid event could shake seven or more states at once. That's why scientists pay close attention to what's happening here now. Since the 1970s, more than 4,000 small earthquakes have been recorded along the New Madrid system. Most are microquakes, too weak to feel. But they aren't random. They cluster along the same ancient rift zones, the same buried faults that ruptured in 1811 and 1812. GPS measurements add another layer to the story. Satellites show the surface slowly deforming, 
subtle movements that suggest strain is still accumulating. The ground is not relaxing. It's loading. And what worries researchers most isn't the number of earthquakes. It's the gaps between them. In active regions like California, stress is released more frequently. In the Midwest, faults stay locked longer. That means when they do move, they release energy all at once. FEMA has modeled what a modern New Madrid earthquake would look like. The scenario is sobering. A magnitude 7.7 .7 event would produce violent shaking across Missouri, Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky, Illinois, Mississippi, and Indiana simultaneously. Downtown Memphis would experience severe structural damage within seconds. Brick buildings would collapse. Bridges crossing the Mississippi would crack and twist. Power and communication networks would fail almost immediately. In St. Louis, older riverfront districts would be hit especially hard. The gateway arch, designed to flex, would sway dramatically. Industrial infrastructure near the river would shut down automatically as sensors detected ground failure. And the shaking wouldn't be brief. Because of the region's geology, strong ground motion could last several minutes, an eternity during an earthquake, long enough to bring down structures that survived the initial jolt, long enough to overwhelm emergency response before help can even be coordinated. Then come the aftershocks, thousands of them. But one of the least discussed dangers isn't the shaking itself, it's the ground. Much of the Midwest sits on soft, water-saturated soils. During intense shaking, those soils can liquefy, temporarily turning solid ground into something closer to wet cement. Roads slump, buildings tilt or sink, underground pipes rupture. The landscape itself changes. That's exactly what happened in 1811, when sand boils erupted across the region spewing water and sediment to the surface. And then there's the river. During the historic earthquakes, witnesses reported waves moving through the Mississippi itself. Boats were thrown onto shore. The current reversed direction multiple times. This wasn't a tsunami in the ocean sense. It was seismic energy deforming the riverbed in real time. Today, the Mississippi is no longer a frontier river. It's one of the most critical transportation corridors in North America. Hundreds of millions of tons of cargo move along it every year. Fuel depots, pipelines, ports, and power infrastructure line its banks. A major rupture here wouldn't just cause local damage. It would disrupt national supply chains fuel distribution, and river traffic across half the country. And unlike the West Coast, much of the Midwest isn't prepared. Building codes in many central states were never designed with major earthquakes in mind. Thousands of bridges, schools, hospitals, and power facilities predate modern seismic standards. There is no widespread early warning system. No regional muscle memory for large earthquakes. That's the hardest truth. The danger isn't just the fault, it's the surprise. Scientists can't say when the new Madrid system will rupture again. It could be decades away, it could be longer, or it could happen sooner than expected. Earthquake forecasting can identify risk, not timing. But history is clear about one thing. This fault does not announce itself loudly before it moves. It builds pressure quietly. It waits. And when it releases, the effects are felt far beyond where the ground breaks. The Midwest looks calm. The farms stretch flat to the horizon. The river flows steadily south. But beneath it all, the earth remembers what it did before. And it will do it again. The question isn't whether the new Madrid fault can still move. It's whether we're prepared for what happens when it does. 
What makes the new Madrid seismic zone especially difficult to live with isn't just its potential size, but its uncertainty. Unlike plate boundary faults that release stress more regularly, intraplate systems like this one behave erratically. They can remain locked for generations, then release enormous energy in a short window before falling silent again. That pattern makes public awareness fade just as risk quietly rebuilds. Scientists are now using a combination of seismic networks, satellite GPS, and soil analysis to better understand how stress moves through the region. New studies focus on how energy transfers between buried fault strands and how soft sediments amplify shaking at the surface. Even small differences in soil composition can mean the difference between a building standing or collapsing. This is why two towns just miles apart could experience drastically different damage during the same earthquake. There's also growing discussion about preparedness beyond engineering. Emergency planners are looking at evacuation routes that cross bridges built long before seismic standards existed. Hospitals are assessing backup power systems designed for storms, not sustained ground motion. River authorities are modeling what happens if navigation channels shift suddenly, or if levees fail from liquefaction rather than flooding. These are not hypothetical concerns. They're practical questions being asked right now quietly behind the scenes. And while technology has improved dramatically, one reality hasn't changed. Earthquakes in this region will not come with a countdown. There will be no dramatic buildup visible to the public. The ground won't crack open days in advance. When the new Madrid fault finally releases its stored energy again, the first sign will be the shaking itself. That's why understanding this fault matters, even if you don't live anywhere near it. The Mississippi River connects industries, agriculture, fuel, and commerce across the country. A major disruption here would ripple far beyond the epicenter, affecting supply chains, energy prices, and transportation nationwide. This isn't just a regional risk. It's a national one. The Midwest may look calm, stable, and far removed from seismic danger. But history shows that the quietest faults are sometimes the most deceptive. The New Madrid system has reshaped the land before, and it will do so again. The only unknown is timing. If you found this breakdown helpful, let me know what surprised you most in the comments. Do you think the next major U.S. earthquake will strike the West Coast? Or will it come from a place most people never expect? And if you want more deep dives into the hidden forces shaping our planet, make sure to subscribe. Because the most important stories are often happening underground, long before anyone feels them.